Hey, hey, what's this? Fugu. <gasps> it is uh, Blowfish, uh, but I should warn you that one... Come on, pal, Fugu me! Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. I haven't seen all of The Simpsons episodes over the years, but one that has always stuck in my mind is from season two. It's when the family goes out to a Japanese restaurant. Homer ends up eating his way through the entire menu until he gets to fugu, Japanese puffer fish which is delicious if prepared properly or potentially deadly if not. Homer being Homer ends up with the apprentice rather than the master and is told he has been poisoned and has 24 hours to live. Much hilarity ensues as I'm sure you can imagine. Fugu, if it is cut improperly it's... It's yes, it yes, it is poisonous, potentially fatal. Mmm, fan fugu tastic. Uh, perhaps this pamphlet will be helpful. So you're going to die. I thought that was an appropriate theme, therefore, for today's video review of the Citizen NY0130, aka the Fugu, so called because it has a picture of said puffer fish on the case back. I think it's nice of a Japanese brand to name the watch for us rather than have us do it ourselves. Now I've been talking about getting a Fugu in for a while, for review and also for comparison. I'm gonna put it head to head with an Orient Star Diver and a Seiko King Samurai in a battle of the Japanese heavyweights. The question for today's video is, is it a case of Fugu me or Fugu you? Let's flip the camera find out. All right, props to Citizen right off the bat for two things today. The first is the warranty. If you buy it from an authorized Citizen dealer, like what I did, you get a full five-year warranty. Now, this isn't an expensive watch. I cannot think of another brand that offers you a better level of warranty at this end of the market. Second thing to give them credit for is the packaging. Even though it's given me grief here because it's so enormous, it's also pretty fantastic. It is the ProMaster diving tank. Now, you don't always get this. I think I've had three ProMasters now, and I've had this diving tank for two of them. A welcome addition to any man cave or woman cave, as the case may be. And if you pull it up, there is the Fugu. Now, the reason I picked the Fugu to represent Citizen in the forthcoming battle of the Japanese heavyweights is because it has a broadly similar set of specifications and dimensions to the other two watches that I mentioned earlier on. So 43.7 mil in diameter, but it doesn't really wear like a 44 this one. It wears slightly smaller than that, I think, for a number of reasons. The first of which is it's not particularly thick, bang on 13 mil, and also bang on 50 mil lug to lug is perfectly wearable as well as our 20 mil lug width. I would have expected a 43.7 to have had 22, but there you go, 20 mil lug width, tapering down to 18, back up to 20 at the clasp. Sized up for me, 161 grams. Again, big size, but not particularly big weight. All stainless construction, case stainless bezel, and screw on stainless case back. I'll show you that in just a second, the one with the puffer fish. Solid links, solid end links. It is a pin and collar system here, and. Yeah, let me just hide the clasp for now. I'll circle back to that shortly. The standard of case finish on this and all the other Citizen Pro Masters that I've reviewed previously is actually very nice. A mixture of super smooth polish, some brushing on the upper lug surface, and a really fine satinized brushing on that bezel. It almost looks bead blasted. Somehow it all works in combination. Now, this watch's USP is the eight o'clock crown. Guarded there with a really nice grippy knurled signed with the ProMaster logo crown. That crown does of course screw down because this watch is ISO rated, divers 200 meters. Piece of flat sapphire crystal, not sure if there's any anti-reflective undercoating there though. Yeah, not so much in my studio lights. Actually, when I get this one outside later on, it's not a massive impediment, but yeah, it could have done with a little bit. Aluminium bezel insert, and it's a 120 click unidirectional rotating dive time bezel. Action is very nice indeed. I believe the old Citizen NY008s and NY009s had a 60 click bezel, but they have upgraded to a 120 click bezel. They've also upgraded it from mineral to sapphire, and they've also upgraded the movement as well. And they are into the stainless steel screw down case back is the aforementioned puffer fish. Slightly cartoony, slightly angry looking. I think that looks great. Just goes to show you don't have to go all in on these embossed case backs to have something that looks attractive. 
unusual spec sheet, there's a bit of magnetic resistance apparently as well. Stainless steel divers 200 meters and a Japanese movement sapphire crystal. It does say service center repair only on this one, which I appreciate on an eco drive. Not necessarily sure that it applies in this case because it is a basic 8000 series Miota. The Miota 8204 to be precise, any watchmaker worth their salt would be able to service that, no problems at all. Though they'll probably suggest that they just replace it with a new one because they are pretty cheap, these movements, to be honest. 21 joule hacking and hand winding is an upgrade over the 8203, which hand wound but did not hack. 21,600 vibrations per hour. This one coming in very well at minus one second per day variance. Stated tolerance of these, please bear in mind, are minus 20 to plus 40. So I got a good one. There's no guarantee that you will. Healthy amplitude and minimal beat error. But okay then, let's circle back to the bracelet. Reasonable integration of the lugs with the end links. Actually, quite broad shouldered this one. You'll see it on my wrist in a bit. They could have done with trimming those lugs a little bit, but it's not too bad and not much rattle there. It's a three link oyster style. There are only single links underneath. And then there's the clasp. What on earth is going on there? That belongs on a cheap dress watch, not on a dive watch. It's high polished. It's got the kind of double security pushers there. It's cheap pressed on top. It's cheap pressed underneath. There's no diver's extension whatsoever. And it only has two holes, therefore effectively one hole either way, of micro adjust. Citizen didn't get the memo. The clasp was supposed to be much better than this. At least someone did get the memo about making the dial and handset legible and purposeful, if not necessarily particularly attractive. I normally put in loads of macro at this point, but I don't think I'll be hanging around here all that often. Super black, these are available in a loom dial version and a green dial version, perhaps that would have a bit more visual interest because you're not really getting a lot from the dial and handset, I don't think. Citizen logo printed on there, the ProMaster logo and automatic and that divers with an apostrophe 200 meters above the index at six. Now those indexes are embossed, the indices are pushed through from the back, loom filled and then surrounded in high polished silver. There is a day date complication over there at the three o'clock and they have rounded the edges of the aperture, rounded and softened the dial for that one at least. Handsets, kind of classic Citizen stuff here. Flat though and high polished silver, segmented and with little syringe tips to the hour and the minute hand. The only color on the dial is the red surrounds to the tip of the arrowhead second hand with a nice kind of feathered counterbalance. There is quite a thin high polished chapter ring in gloss black with minute markers printed on there and little rectangular squares in white for the fives. Now the aluminium bezel insert is not the thickest. The whole bezel is quite large, but it does rather angle in towards the dial. Arabics there though are perfectly reasonable and there is a loom pit set into the silver triangle at 12 o'clock. Talking of loom, you would expect a Citizen Promaster to have fantastic loom and it does. Well, it does initially at least. Really bright green glow from the hands, especially from the indices and also from that loom pip up there at 12 o'clock. If we crank the speed up though, by the time it gets to about 10 minutes into this 20 minute test, you can tell that all is not well. If I slow it back down to regular speed here, it's really, really patchy. I think that's a symptom of the fact that these indices are embossed, they're pushed through from the back, they're not properly applied, and therefore they're not properly loom filled. If we crank the speed up again and head to the end of the 20 minute test period, disappointment all round. I'm gonna hang on to this one and put it in a Loom Wars video as well. I don't expect it to get very far. So can the Fugu redeem itself on wrist then? Well, yes and no. As mentioned, it doesn't really wear like a 44. I think visually that narrow bezel kind of brings it in a bit. And if I show you the side profile, there's a lovely curve from the bezel and from the case. It sits on the wrist like a smaller watch as well. And I think 20 mil lug width helps kind of bring it down visually. Having said that though, those lugs are really quite big. Those kind of haunches, broad shoulders there. I'm a fan of 20 mil, but I think this watch may have benefited from 22 mil. I think it would have looked visually more resolved if it had been. And then there's the clasp with the bugger all micro adjust. I was wearing this watch yesterday and it was cold in Sydney and it fitted me perfectly. Today, it's too tight and I need another micro adjust hole. That's why watches have micro adjust hole, citizen. Why didn't you give us any? At least it's legible though. Big broad hands, large indices, white, silver on black. No problems at all in that regard. 
and it looks good in natural light as well. Nice and sunny here in Sydney today and I had no problems given the lack of anti-reflective undercoating on that sapphire crystal. And on wrist, perhaps it's an unflattering angle, but as I've mentioned, it doesn't really wear like a 43.7 mil diameter kind of traditional long lugged watch would. Despite the rubbish clasp, it's actually quite well balanced as well. 160 grams, it's not enormously top heavy. Perhaps that's because I've got it on slightly tighter than I would like to though. And backed by popular demand, at least one of you asked for it anyway, it's the pocket shot. Doesn't really look too enormous on me anyway. Please forgive the mismatched shorts and t-shirt. I gave up matching my clothes close in about March last year. So you know what's coming next, don't you? I'm going to summarize all those gripes that I've had with the watch so far in the review in this the official formal moans and niggles section. I was expecting a little bit more of the Citizen Fugu than I got. It's not a particularly cheap watch. These are 500 Aussie dollars. Normally I paid 400 Aussie dollars for it in a Black Friday special. You can pick these up on eBay all day long for about 330 US dollars. It feels to me like an old watch. This is a 2021 model and as discussed, they have made some upgrades, but it feels a couple of generations behind the best in class anyway. Basic 8000 series Miyota movement. Aluminium bezel insert rather than a ceramic bezel insert. What on earth is going on with that clasp? I've never seen a less suitable clasp on a dive watch than this one. ISO certified. Where's the diver's extension? Where's the micro adjustment? I've no idea what they were thinking. So overall, I'm afraid this one is a bit more Fugu you than it is Fugu me. I've really enjoyed the previous Citizen Promaster models that I have reviewed. They have been the more economical ones with Mineral Crystal coming in at maybe two thirds of the price of this one. I don't see it's worth spending the extra on this just for the Sapphire Crystal upgrade. I think there are too many restrictions in other areas. I think this one might struggle when I put it head to head with the Seiko and the Orient. So there you have it, the Citizen Fugu. It's okay. And this is such a competitive end of the market. I think it has to be a little bit better than just okay. Why not check out their much more economical EcoDrive ProMaster or Automatic ProMaster? Most of the watch, but for far less cash. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.